Okay, I'm back, this time with a new microphone, and today I have for you the smallest observerless 4x4 carpet door. Oops. If you saw my last video, you'll notice this is quite similar to the smallest 3x3 glass, just expanded one, and that's because it is. It's pretty much the same sequence of a triple on the top and a worm on the bottom. It's just expanded to 4. However, there is one difference which is how the toggle on the side is done. This one is quite weird, using lava and dispenser to do an update to this piston, and some entity tricks down here to get a toggle. So we're gonna just get a look. So on closing, I'll drag the minecart up, and on opening, nothing happens here. So that is quite interesting, I saw it show it in this door, so let's get right on to the tutorial. Okay, so to build this, you're gonna need a two deep, Four, six wide and 17 high area which is 204 blocks total and we'll start by building this by building our worm so I want to find this front left corner here this will be where our sticky pist our non-sticky pistons are we have a line of four of them across like that and then four sticky pistons on top just like that and then we'll have our door blocks here. So I'm using quartz for this. We'll have four by four section of that. And then on top of this will be our carpet, as is a carpet door. And then we'll build four high on the side for the side of our frame. And four more blocks across the top. This is where we'll build our triple extender. So three sticky pistons facing down right there and on top of that we'll go two two blocks higher and just build a row of normal pistons facing down like that and that's our entire layout now to power the door we're first going to start with a dropper hopper and this is how we're going to power all four uh, normal pistons at the top so we'll have a wooden button here until power three of the four pistons. But to power the last one, you only need one item in here. We're gonna use uh, the hopper dropper here. And this comparator here will detect the output from this hopper through this block and powers this dust, which will power this last piston here. So now as you see, all four pistons get extended. This one's a bit late, but that doesn't really matter. Now, to power the rest of our inputs, we're first going to start by powering the top by having a slab here with a dust on it. That's because we'll have a torch under here, going into a repeater, which will power this block and power the redstone under it, like this. So, this will power our top input at the same time, and we can just build our other inputs right here as well. So you want two more lines of dust below our top input here. And the way we're going to build this is we're going to have a torch here, which will update this torch here, which is part of a burnout, which will create the pulses needed for our triple. We have a one tick repeater here. And then a dust here. And then we'll have a door block here and a three tick repeater on it. And we'll have a rail right here which will update these pistons. And this should be our entire triple extender done. So I press it. See it fully extends, fully retracts. Yep. So that's our entire top done. So now to build our toggle in the bottom part, this is where it gets interesting. So we're going to have a dispenser here with a lava in it. We want to use lava instead of water because if we put water in here, it'll just start flowing down the side of the door. Since lava takes a bit longer to flow, it won't do that. And this will update this sticky piston here, which gets budded from this block. We're also going to want to put a block here, which will power, bud powers this dropper here and be updated by this rail. And if you want, I'm just going to set these to concrete instead of. Uh, um, wool just so they don't 
burn from the lava. So, if I push this button up here, you'll see this piston gets extended once per cycle, which is much better than the eight pulses that we get from this dust here. You just build the rest of your frame like that. So we're actually going to put a burnout here. And this burnout will update this piston here. So instead of getting one long pulse, you just get a short pulse here, and then the extra lava doesn't do anything. And this will generate one, one tick pulse every time the door is activated. And so from that pulse, we'll build our toggle here, which uses the minecart. So you want to have a piston facing down beneath this redstone here, and a cauldron. It does not need to be filled with water. Then below here, we'll build our minecart in. So we're going to have a fence gate below this cauldron here, a rail here, just to push our minecart in. We're going to push our minecart against the fence like that and break these blocks here. Actually, I think this block here needs to be a slab so you can just push that in using a piston like this. Like that. So now you'll see that when this piston here retracts, It will retract that minecart like that um, using the cauldron. So now we just need to push a block here like that. And so now this minecart, when it gets retracted, it will end up activating this pressure plate here, which will use the other outputs as it only happens once every other time the door is activated. So nothing happens there. Now our pressure plate gets activated. And we'll use this to first activate our bottom row here. So we'll have a line of redstone there, two tick repeater, and two redstone dust like that. And then we'll also use it as sort of a falling edge here, which activates our burnout right here, which will activate these two lines of redstone here to finish off our worm. Just put your carpet right above this redstone dust here, like that, and that should finish off the door. You see, there's opening, here's closing, just like that. So, as you can see, first our line here activates for a bit, and then once it turns off, the burnout will activate, finishing off the worm here. Yep, so just like that, that's your door done. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.